Now question number six. A collimated white light source illuminates the slits of a double slit interference setup and forms the interference pattern on the screen. If one slit is covered with a blue filter, which one of the following statement is correct? And you are given four options. So, if this is a source, this is a white light source and these and the slits so here one slit is covered with blue filter and if this is a source the white light source is going like this so this is blue filter and this is white light so to form a interference pattern light two slits should be some should be of same frequency and wavelength so that we will have a blue interference so in this screen we'll have a blue interference pattern so the correct option is answer c now question number seven Consider a system of n distinguishable particles with two energy levels for each particle, a ground state with energy 0 and an excited state with energy E greater than 0. What is the average energy particle as the system temperature T tends to infinity? And these are the four options. So, we know that partition function Z is summation of g i which is degeneracy e to the power minus beta e i so first we will find out partition function so here degeneracy is a distinguishable particle so it's one and first is first energy is zero and second ground state energy and excited excited state is e so e to the power minus beta into 0 plus e to the power minus beta into e so this is 1 plus e to the power minus beta e now the occupation number so when in the ground state this is n0 which is n divided by z to the power minus beta into 0 so this is this is n divided by z and n1 is n divided by z e to the power minus beta e so n divided by 1 plus e to the power minus beta e and this is n divided by 1 plus e to the power minus beta e into e to the power minus beta e now the average energy e is n0 e0 plus n1 e1 so e0 is 0 that means this is 0 now n1 is n divided by 1 plus e to the power minus beta e e1 is e e to the power minus beta e so we'll just multiply with e to the power plus beta e then it will it will be 1 and this is e to the power beta e plus 1 so n e divided by e to the power e divided by kt plus 1 so average energy per particle divided by n is e to the power e divided by kt plus 1 and when t tends to infinity in this case we will see that if t tends to infinity that means e to the power 0 and plus 1 so e to the power 0 is 1 so this will be e divided by 2 so the correct option is option b This is question number 8. 
Consider a diatomic molecule with an infinite number of equally spaced non-degenerate energy levels. The spacing between any two adjacent levels is epsilon and the ground state energy is zero. What is the single particle partition function Z? And you are given four options. So diatomic molecule with an infinite number of equally spaced non-degenerate energy levels. That means n equal to 0 to infinity so if z is summation of i g i to the power minus n beta e i so g i is 1 that means e to the power minus beta into 0 plus e to the power minus 1 beta epsilon plus e to the power minus 2 beta epsilon to the infinity then 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon plus e to the power minus 2 beta epsilon plus this so this is the infinite series so if e to the power minus beta e is x that means 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube so this is 1 minus x inverse 1 so this is 1 minus e to the power minus beta e to the power minus 1 which is 1 divided by 1 minus e to the power minus beta e so according to me this is the correct answer but which is not matching with any other options here so if anyone get any other answer then please comment below now question number 9 a very long solenoid axis along z direction of n tons per unit length carries a current which increases linearly with time i equal to kt. What is the magnetic field inside the solenoid at a given time t? And here are the four options. So this is a z direction and if this is a solenoid. And current is flowing like in this direction so we know that B is mu naught n i i is current and they have given that i is kt so mu naught n k t so now the direction so uh, using that right hand thumb rule so if current is going like this that means that magnetic field in the z direction okay so magnetic field in the z direction so the correct option is b sorry a so this is question number 10 suppose psi a is a conservative vector and a is non-conservative vector and psi is a non-zero scalar everywhere which one of the following is true and these are four options so first of all psi a is conservative vector but a is non-conservative so psi is conservative vector that means that uh, from the property of conservative vector we can write that curl of psi a is zero but they say that A is non-conservative. That means curl of A is not zero. And psi is a non-zero scalar. So psi is non-zero scalar. So from this we can write that psi of curl of A minus A cross psi uh, grad psi equal to zero. So, psi of curl of A equal to A cross grad psi. Now, if we curl of A dot A, then A cross grad psi dot A, and this will give us 0. So from here we can say that and psi is uh, non-zero so we can can't say that 
size 0 so here curl of a dot a is 0 or you can always remember that that divergence of curl is always 0 so the correct option is here is option A